The Scarlet and Violet era is here, reintroducing Pokemon EX and powerful cards such as Nest Ball and a reprint of Sky Arrow Bridge. Today, I'm going to be going over my top 10 decks in Standard, and this list is heavily influenced on several recent online tournaments. Hundreds of matches, um, 13 tournaments at the time of recording, and already a huge impact on the metagame. I'm going to do my best and give you my picks for the current format. Kicking our list off at number 10, we have Gujar V-Star. Gujar V-Star has established itself as one of the best decks in the previous format, having won the most recent regional championships in Fort Wayne. It never really had a great, like, super dominant matchup spread. It just kind of did decent against everything. Um, it has lost a few cards like Scoop of Net, but it is very similar. Um, it, it's going to play basically the same. This list that I copied from a, a recent late night series event is trying to go like a hybrid approach with having Melanie's and uh, Mirage Gates to hopefully load up your Gujas quickly. I don't know if I, I kind of do just prefer to go all in on the Lost Zone package, but I know you're not going to be quite as explosive without Scoop of Net, so maybe that is the correct way to go. This is a deck I have not tested extensively with myself. Um, and a newcomer in here is like uh, the beach, beach court as i mentioned in the intro is a, a reprint of skyro bridge lets it, us move through our come phase very easily defiant band is an, another new card and this is pretty interesting because like in the past we've seen Gujar's play choice belt but choice belt is not going to uh, cut it in one shot a maridon anymore as it is a pokemon ex and we're almost always going to be falling behind our opponent will take early prizes on come fey cramorant so it's uh, if we need a one shot a basic pokemon ex we still can get there i'd maybe like to split one and one so we still can um, be aggressive in one shot pokemon v with a choice belt i know with only one of these it will be harder to find the specific one when, when you need it maybe you could add a a, a, a raihan then but overall i think gudra is still kind of that jack of all trades deck like it's a, not really a master of anything but you're gonna be pretty decent in the lost zone box gonna be pretty solid into lugia gonna be pretty solid into uh, um, like Mew is not necessarily your greatest matchup, but I don't think Gardevoir would be your greatest matchup either because they can definitely threaten one shots. But you still can manage in just about every scenario, and that's why Gudra is number 10 on this list. Now, at number 9, we have Arceus Giratina. Arceus Giratina was a very strong deck in the Lost Origin format, but quickly fell out of favor once the Silver Tempest expansion came out, and now it's back, and in my opinion, is the best way to play Lugia V Star. It gives you a solid one shot attacker in those matchups like Lugia. And um, also, you just have the tankiness of Arceus. This list is featuring a flying Pikachu as well, which is also um, it's great against Lost Soul Box, but also pretty nice against Lugia because you're going to be hitting those Lugia V Stars for weakness. And they have several um, basic single prizes that they try to throw at you, but they can't do that into the flying Pika. And you have that Sharon's care to uh, pick up your Arceus over and over again into Lost Soul Box. So I think this deck is very well balanced right now, and I might be underrating it by putting it at number nine. I just think it's an all around great deck. You patch the Peak Bus Judge, so you're pretty like. <laughs> Like an escape hatch for pretty much every matchup. So now that I think about it, this is probably underrating the deck slightly. I know um, it's like not like, terribly exciting to play, which I guess might be why I'm sort of underrating it a little bit. But this uh, placed ninth place at a recent um, late night series event, I believe, by the YouTuber Little Dark Fury. So go check him out. I'm sure you guys are all subscribed to him already. I do like B-Guard Energy in this deck too to make your guys a little tankier. And so I don't have anything bad to say about this deck. It just overall just seems pretty solid. Choice Belt does mean you're also going to get 310 damage. So you have a bit like higher of it, like against an opposing like V-Guarded Lugia. You still can one-shot it with your Tina. But it's overall really like, like this list. And I think it, um, it has a pretty solid amount of spread. And I'm probably underrating it by putting it at the number nine spot. Now the number eight spot, we have Shadow Rider Calyrex. I thought Shadow Rider Calyrex would completely fall, like, fall, fall out to Gardevoir. But I saw this deck get a, have a very solid couple placements on a couple online series events. And I just thought this looked like, really cool. I would like sort of like a thicker Klefki line. Like, um, Shadow Rider Shadow Calyrex is just, it's one weakness is it's so slow. And I feel like sitting behind Klefki is sort of like a really cool early game option. And I don't know, like, I, I really love the whole Hatterene Klefki idea like, against Lost Zone Box. You can, the Hatterene lets you do 80, then switch it to the bench. So against um, Lost Zone Box, you can like knock out a, a Kumpfe, go back into Klefki, keep them. Ability Locks just all, like, seems just really good all around. Mawile is going to be great against Lugia and, or not necessarily say Lugia, but definitely Gardevoir, what if they bench a Radiant Greninja or something, you can just gust it up, and then Mawile makes them never re retreat, just I'm um, hard win that way. You of course have Shadow Mist for Mew, so like, this deck has a lot to like. I think you're going to be very weak into Lost Zone Box if they are, um, can set up, and then can just load up a Drape on Irmian for a very bad time. And then also, like, Lugia seems very bad, because they have their, like, Tyranitar, they have their... I um, mean, like single prize Yavel Talk. We're looking for a pretty rough time, I think, into Lugia and Lost in Box, which, spoiler alert, I mean, very high up on this list. So that's why this deck is not very, is not very much higher. Well, I do think it has like the tools to potentially be a, a great deck, 
the way the meta is right now, it just does not seem like that's um, not going to happen too often. Um, if you wanted to improve that Legion matchup, you definitely could try to fit maybe a 1-1 one -one Aerodactyl line into this deck. But to sum it up, I think this deck has the tools in its kit to be a good deck, but I'm fearing that it's probably too slow and also not strong enough into the best decks in format to truly be meta viable. On to number 7, we have Maridon EX, and you're probably very surprised to see this deck this low, and I'll explain here in just a moment. Maridon EX is a new EX from uh, Scarlet and Violet, and its tandem unit ability lets us search our deck for two lightning Pokemon and put it onto our bench. So a very solid, consistent ability, and its attack is 220, and we cannot um, attack with it on the next turn. So it has, this card has a lot going for it. Um, and we do have that Regilecki from Silver Tempest, that lets us boost our damage by 30. We have Zapdos to boost our damage even further. But the energy acceleration is where this deck is, is lacking, in my opinion. Electro Generator is an amazing card. Let's look at the top three cards of our deck. That's up to two lightning energies. But it just doesn't get the job done enough of the time. Like, that it's not like a deep dig like Max Luxor was back in the day. That, yes, you can grab two, but it's just like such a... Like, he plays so many physical energies just to um, be able to actually, like, have a decent odds of hitting off the Electro Generator. And if your generators are not hitting, you're going to be so far behind. Like, just mainly attaching is too slow anymore. That you really need to kind of like high roll with this deck and like hit those generators on turn one and, and have them hit. And like if that happens, you're probably going to run your opponent off the table. If it doesn't happen, you're going to be picking up your cards fairly quickly. But um, like, and like the more energies you add, the less consistent you get. So it's a pretty weird deck that and I, I do think that maybe there's some innovation that could be done to make it like super consistent. And probably the best list has not been nailed down yet. I do like Clef Key to maybe buy you a little time if you do sort of spider in the early game. But, um, I do, and, and, and Arvin's also a really cool card in this deck, lets us search out those generators, um, and, and basically, like, a pseudo-computer search to also find the Forest Seal Stone. So, uh, there is some stuff to like here, but I think there is still work to be done with Maradon, and that's why it's number 7 on our list. On the number 6 spot, we have Urshifu VMAX, and Urshifu was once a very strong deck, being arguably the best deck in format during the Brilliant Stars format, but it fell off hard after that. Like, it was not even a viable deck, pretty much, after Palkia V-Star got printed. And now I would say it's definitely a viable deck now. But to, while we cannot always depend on Urshifu to get the job done with, with Mana Fee and Psychic Wind conditions like Mew and uh, Gardevoir, it's a powerful ally in Inteleon. It serves as a solid two-shot attacker that's pretty tanky and also can help, um, help us set up those key numbers with that double gunner ability. We're buying several Y energies to make that work as well as Alakazam to move those damage counters around. Uh, Yoga Loop is always a, a strong threat to pick up those Mana Fees and then take an extra turn. And then we also have Melanie to have synergy with Double Gunner that it puts Warriors in the discard pile and then we instantly accelerate them back. And can then just like chain rapid flows fairly consistently. So I do think that this is a very cool way to play Urshifu. I, and, and you should have a pretty solid Lost Zone Box matchup. Um, I have a pretty good Mew matchup because you're playing Double Drapion. I do think your Lugia matchup is a very big question mark because how are you going to get through Lugia V-Star? Like you're, I, I know you can go, you can start like pressuring those Archeops with like Double Gunner, Double Gunner and then go for a rapid flow but if they just put energies like that, that's going to take you some time to set up and if they can start putting energies like onto two lugias i think you're it could be a very difficult time to get through those two lugias so i, I definitely would, would need to play that around with that matchup a little bit more i do think lugia is very good right now so it's a pretty tough sell if your deck is losing to lugia but i think there's definitely um a lot to like um just being able to bully single prizes with rapid flow having a tanky attackers um i, th I think you are not the most consistent deck around. We do have 4-4 four, four ball search cards. We also have a lot of cards that do not help us draw, like, between energy retrieval, echoing horn, um, heavy ball, pal pad. Like, these are cards that are not going to help us draw, so I don't think it's going to be the most consistent deck in town, but also I think you have, like, a lot of upside, and I do think your matchup spread is quite solid, so that's why Urshifu is at number 6. On to our top 5, we have Giratina Vista. You're probably sur surprised to see Giratina this low, but in my opinion, it is outclassed in just about every way to, um, the single prize loss from box variant. But Giratina, of course, gives you very high upside attacker that, that can one shot. Lugia V Star, Star Requiem, of course, can one shot anything in the game. I do think you are going to be very bad into those single prize loss in box decks, but I do think um, you're probably okay in into Lugia. They can throw a lot of single prizes at you as well, which might make um, things difficult for you, but you, of course, you're both one of the best Mew matchups in the game. And you're just, it's, it's, it's a pretty solid deck overall. We, we of course, have um that that kramer and sableye kramer can apply pressure early sableye of course is bully those single prizes later in the game we have beach court to, to move around our come phase easily still have those roxanne clara is the best pokemon recovery we have right now with ordinary rod rotating and i would be sort of 
I haven't played around with this deck enough, uh, with myself enough to know, but the energy count is rather light, uh, at least compared to what we saw last format. And we don't have those ordinary rods to recover energies, so I'm wondering if it's as like easy to pop off with those Mirage Gates, or if your hands get bogged down with energies, and then you can't, well, one Recycler, you can't really uh, get them back, so you're just like stuck with a ton of energies that you can't accelerate. Maybe the, the Raihan sort of balances that out a little bit, but I would probably like to find a spot for a second Recycler in this list. That would make me uh, rest a little bit better, but I think Giratina is a, a very solid pick. Nonetheless, of course, it's still a top 5 deck right now. I just think it is outclassed by the decks above it, and the decks above it are very good. Our number 4 deck is Mew Max. Mew Max has been a mainstay since being printed in Fusion Strike, uh, being by debatably BDIF, or uh, just an incredibly tier 1 deck produces its whole existence and it is uh, no different post rotation i know a lot of people have a crowned bdif before rotation but i still think it is a little bit uh a little far from that uh to be clear i think that like the the, the top five decks are like a tier above everything else that like you can probably move around the all these decks around one or two spots but the decks below it are just like a chunk below it. like these top five decks are i think pretty significantly better than the rest of the field uh in the movie max i talked a lot already been said about it it's just that Judge, Pass to the Peak, I think is still the way to go. I just, you, Mew has just never had a terribly great matchup into everything. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to uh, explain it. Uh, like, if I'm a, a Mew player and I see, there's very few things that my opponent could flip over that would make me be like, dang, I don't, I don't really like this matchup. But also, there's not a whole lot where my opponent flips over. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm super excited about this matchup. And that's, I think, why Mew is so good because kind of what I was trying to say about Gujar earlier, Mew just does everything pretty decently. Like, it's not going to just, like, completely smash one matchup. Like, especially if it wins the coin flip, you're going to win a lot of those games just because you're going to take those first two prizes, and you pretty much keep your foot on the gas for the rest of the game. And, like, this is why, um, like, that path, or the, um, Fusion Strike build, yes, you have that turn two pressure, but you're also, you're not also going to be quite as consistent as this build. And also, if things do go wrong, like, you go second, like, the Fusion Strike build can get tempo back with Meloetta, I personally prefer that judge uh, path to like uh, slow down your opponent, hopefully uh, slow things down and allow you to get back into the game. And it's going to be great against Lugi, Lawson Box, um, like shut down Drapion. And I just think that this is a very, very strong list right now. I like the Feather Balls to find the Muse. Um, I, I, I do like the, the, the shoes right now. I, 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 honestly, I'd love four shoes and Mew, but I don't really think there's a space for it right now. I guess you could uh, consider adding cross switchers to the, the deck. You probably could cut. Um, I mean, I think maybe you could get like t t two switches, a rope, and a shoe. I don't really like that very much, but you definitely, if you wanted to play cross switchers, you, you could play them. Silent Pad just feels really good to have a ton of supporter cards and have nearly infinite resources. So I think that like Mew has not really changed very much at all. Like if you look at this compared to last format Mew, uh, we, we're not playing cross switchers, but we have, and we don't have Quick Ball anymore. We just replace those with Feather Ball and Nest Ball and pretty much just uh, ran it back. And that's why Mew is still in the top five after all this time. Into our top three, we have Gardevoir EX, and this is my highest ranked new deck. And Gardevoir EX is a very powerful Psychic Embrace ability that lets us attach as many Psychic Energies as we like during our turn from our discard pile to our Pokemon, to our Psychic Pokemon, we get to put two damage counters on them. So, I'll, I'll, we have seen uh, Gardevoir be paired with like, Cresselia and other uh, like, single prize Psychic attackers, but this list has been succeeding a lot online, and that's with Music Union. And Music Union has been very strong um, in its own like, control deck, we've seen it paired with RSTS before. But Gardevoir gets us a way to accelerate all in one turn, and, and like that, final, like being able to use Final Burn and just one shot anything basically, um, size explosion to clean up as uh, single prizers, and just be also like, to, to heal it up is just like very appealing to, um, reason to play Mewtwo of Union. I don't know how easy it is to like pull off this play though. I saw this list, I think, at two top four, maybe two top eight placements at a late night event this past Tuesday, and I just wonder how easy it is to get all four pieces in this card pilot. There's no Burnett. There is no, um, like only three Ultra Balls, so I'd be intrigued to know if it's really consistent enough to work that often. And of course, that Zacian B is such a powerful one-shot attacker. And the reason why Guard War is not higher, despite having like seemingly everything, is that it's a stage two deck. So it's like inherently in inconsistent. It's going to be slow. Like this list playing no rare candies, which I think is like, um, it's it's, it's fine, but uh, like I, I think like early hand disruption could really do you in. Like only like four hard draw supporters like makes me a little bit worried. So, like, you have to play a lot of energies, get him in the discard pile early to um, be able to use Psychic Embrace to his really full effect. 
and like i think just, i think the deck might be a little clunky like if you can um, just pop off get a couple of vips get all your worlds down um i think you're be like in can then trade and keep building up your hand um i think we'll be in a pretty solid spot but i'm just i just be concerned that uh you're just not gonna be qu quick enough to win games against like lost in box you can like take um can like take two prizes um like to take on multiple worlds multiple curlias or against like lugia that can uh, go without really two prize lugia that's like a top pokemon to take out but then also can like revert into single prize mode late in the game so if they get an early enough lead that um you might not have enough time to come back but i also think gardevoir has a lot a lot going for it like mutative union is just such a powerful attacker it might be the single most powerful pokemon in the game um is, is it if and of course it is a new deck so it could it's still rough and refined and i think the best list is probably still out there somewhere but um we're gonna keep working on it we're gonna try to keep making gardevoir better and i think it has the chance to rise up this list and maybe um, become in contention for bdif but right now this is what we have and that's why it's number number three on to our silver medal deck we have lugia v star and yeah a familiar position for lugia it basically was bdif one of the most dominant ever uh, past format and now it's still very strong of course lugia v star able to, to cheat those archaeops into play uh oh, its supporting cast is gone but it's replaced by an equally admirable new cast so of course we get those archaeops down attach the special energies and then swing early with that 220 uh, tempest die we can't reach as big numbers without powerful colorless anymore but we still can be very tanky with v guard and uh, Radiant Gardevoir down the list, and we also have uh, powerful single strike at attackers with Tyranitar, which can reach basically um, one one shot numbers, and also Stone Journey to hit that very powerful fighting weakness. I have seen this also playing with the single strike Yveltal um, as a dark a single prizer, and this won the North America late night tournament, and it also won the um, EU time one too. So I think it really made a statement this past uh, Tuesday that it's. It, it, in contention for the best second format and right now i have lugia basically as 1b and lost box as 1a but i think you definitely gotta, like swap those around um i, I think I, i'm pretty solid that these are the two best decks in format but i think you definitely could swap them around i think that like you, like when we're talking about like tier, i think we have lugia lost box and like everything below it's a tier like the next three decks are a tier and then after that it's like b tier and so on but I, I still think Lugia, it definitely loses it a lot of consistency, but I think it, it, it's still consistent enough. Um, the format has slowed up just enough. I think Burnett is still, um, is is like okay to, to, to play now. Regenerative Energy is also very cool because we can slap out on a Lugia. Our Lugia gets punched for 110 by Cramer. Then we can just evolve and heal all that off. So it um, sort of makes um, like our inconsistency or just the speed of the lacking of speed in the deck like uh, canceled out. A, a, a little bit so i i really like to give you a start it might be uh, my favorite deck in format right now i just think it's really strong has everything it needs to be the best deck in format and as long as it's consistent enough which I, there are some, some question marks but I, I still think Lugia is probably the best deck in format but i'm not sure so i have it at number two but definitely could be number one i love Lugia v star and finally our number one deck and that is surprise loss inbox i think this deck just has everything we have powerful and quick single prize attackers like um Cramorant, we have Sableye that just bullies um those evolving basics. We have Glarian Zapdos to uh, threaten those Maridons and other um fighting Pokemon like Arceus and even some dark types like Tyranitar that are creeping in. And then we also have Drapion to take out Mew, a uh, Mew's v Union Gardevoir. Um so I just I just really like this deck. I don't know why it's playing Yveltal. This was a I believe the EU winning or a, a strong one that uh, did well at a um, online tournament this week. I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I thought this in a Japanese list too. I don't fully understand it because like you can just kind of do off a Lugia. I don't know what that really does for you long term. And like against Mew, I guess it does something. But I feel like I'd rather be taking a, a three prizes with a Drapion. So I don't really know the point of that card. Like explain if you know why. Explain to me in, in, in the description below, please. Because I'm still sort of puzzled why they're playing that. Um, we still have we don't have that anymore, of course. But we still have Beach Court. We have a uh, four four card, eight, one switch, and three rope. Uh, no ordinary ride, but we do have two Claras, uh, one energy recycler. Like, like I said about the um, uh, the Giratina deck, I am sort of skeptical on one energy recycler. I know this is not a super heavy Mirage Gate build, like really nothing like needs Mirage Gate. I have like Radiant Greninja, maybe even you can put some on a uh, Glorian Zapdos. But I would just be like, I, I want to be able to discard my energies early so I can um, draw my cards, of course, with Radiant Greninja. And I might feel like you energies could get depleted fairly quickly and making those mirage gates basically dead cards so i would like a second recycler 
But uh, I haven't played enough Lost in Box. I need to play more of this format. Just TCG Live just ruins everything. I can't play as much as I used to, but um, uh, it, it is what it is. And now I'm going to be showing off a Sables art build. Here is my current list of Sables art build. It's not really mine. It's just a, a strong um, placing online list. And I, I think that this is like pretty much the Sables art that we saw last format. Pretty much like we took out Net. We still have the Pokestops. We have the Lost Vacuum. We're just like trying to go fast. Like, maybe get that turn one uh lost mine i do really like the cross switchers uh, to get around clef keys and also put uh put a uh, vulnerable pokemon in the active spot that we maybe can like one shot with the radiant charizard melt tank is also pretty cheeky because sometimes your opponent doesn't oh, oh we will be playing very long games where opponent might discard all their options to get rid of it and there are some decks like um uh miraidon that do not have a good way to get through mill tank so I do, I, I think, I, I don't know which list I like more, because I, I like this, like the sheer speed of this one, but the other um, Mirage Gate build is a bit more versatile. I think I'd probably give the nudge to the Sableizard, the Sableizard one because of just the, the sheer speed of the deck. And I just, I think that's, as long as there's going to be like evolving basics going around, Sable is going to be very good, Clara is going to be very good. We have the, the late game swing in Charizard. Uh, we do have uh, Alucha for the mirror and also just to make our math just a little bit better. So um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, where did I mess up on this list? Where was I wrong? Uh, I'm sorry about my infrequent upload schedule. Like I really want to upload more, but I've been very busy these last few weeks. Um, and as a TCG Live has been so frustrating. Like you've seen all my glitch shorts. It's been bad. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I, I, I can finally get a break and not make a TCG Live video. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we'll have something coming in the upcoming days. If you have any decks you'd like me to play, let me know in the comment section. I'll probably pick uh, one of these for, for my next video. And I think EUIC is next week, if I remember correctly. So if any of you guys are going, uh, let me know in the in the comments. I appreciate all your patience watching through the end of the video. Uh, I just appreciate you guys so, so much. And if you enjoy this kind of content, uh, please, please subscribe. I know I haven't been, been doing... Uh, the best jobs uh staying on, on top of things uploading it frequently but i'm gonna be back there eventually give me a couple weeks i'll be back I, I promise so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for watching all the way through this video i love each and every single one of you guys and this battle puts on catch you the next one